The last topic of this section is overfitting and underfitting. Overfitting occurs when our machine learning algorithm uh, tries to cover all the data points or more than the required data points uh, represented in the given data set. Because of this, the model starts catching noise and inaccurate values present in the data set. And all of these factors reduce the efficiency and also the accuracy of the model. The overfitted model has uh, low bias and high variance. Similarly, we have for underfitting. Underfitting has a high bias and low variance. If you would just recall the trade-off diagram that we have over here, that we have over here, this area is the place which tells us of underfitting. Whatever lies uh, before this line is known as underfitting and this is known as overfitting so if your uh, model complexity lies between somewhere over here this point it is known as underfitting and over here it will be overfitting so overfitting happens when your model works uh, very well in your training data so in your training data it will be very good Okay. but it will do very bad in your test data so the error rate so the error in train oops. so for this is for overfitting okay so e train or j train however you want to symbolize it e train will be very low and e test will be very high so your model will be giving very good accuracy on your training let's say almost 90 percent but on test set your model might give accuracy 50 percent 40 percent so that is a case where it is overfitting and underfitting is the case where your model works this is for overfit let me, oops, let me write it overfit okay and for underfit it is your model does bad in your uh, training also. Uh, so the error is very high in the training also and for test also it is very high. So that is where underfitting occurs. Underfitting occurs when our machine learning model is not able to capture the underlying trend of the data. To avoid the overfitting in the model, the fed of training data can be stopped at an early stage due to which the model may not learn uh, much. Okay, so now let's look into a diagramistic approach of what uh, overfitting, underfitting, and good balance look like. So this is high variance. So all the blue points what we have over here are the data points, and the red line. So the red line what we have is our model okay. so this is our model we are again taking the example of polynomial regression polynomial regression uh, this might be for the case where the degree maybe let's say the degree equals to 10 this is highly overfitted data so when it is overfitting it is having high variance now this one this is a common straight line so it might be degree equals to one. So it is not able to predict a very good uh, model out of it. Now over here, let's say one time, uh, let's uh, change this to five. And over here, what we have is a low bias and low variance, exactly what we need for our model. So this straight line is our model and it is able to just predict everything very nicely. So this is for uh, degree equals to three. This is overfitting, this is underfitting, and this is a good balance. So if we compare it with our training and test set, in this, the blue points are my training set, and let's, uh, let's take some other points. So what I'm gonna mark for, uh, with my purple is going to my test example. So let's say over here, over here, uh, let's take a very different color. Uh, let's take green okay so all of these points over here over here 
are my test set and you can see that this is not a very good fit the red line is my uh, data points and it won't give me a good prediction similarly if we point the same green dots over here the same thing so you can see again see that the red line is our model and the green points are the test set again it will it won't give a very good uh, prediction again if i plot the green line so green points over here so you can see that our model will be giving quite a very good answer for this so that is the difference between overfitting underfitting and good balance now before ending this video let's look into how you can avoid overfitting in model you can use cross validation now what do we mean by cross validation so let's take our data set so let's say this is our data set before what we used to do was uh, we used to take 80 percent of our data for train and 20 percent of our data for test now what you can do is you can break it furthermore okay that is uh, we will take 60 percent of our data for training and 20% of our data for validation and 20% of our data on the test set. Okay, so what we can do is test set is something that our model has never seen. Validation set is the one which will help us uh, improve our model. So let's say we are training again on polynomial regression. So what we can do is we can train our polynomial regression model with degree one. Let's change the color. So with degree one, degree one, we can train our model. And in this validation set, we can check how good our model is. Again, we can check this for our degree two, D equals to two, D equals to three, D equals to four, D equals to five. We can check that our 60% of our training data with different values. Okay, over here we are changing the parameters and we are evaluating it on the validation. Okay, so for degree one, we check it in the validation and we found that the error rate is uh, 0 0.9. Okay, same for degree two, we have 0 0.8. For degree three, we might have the error rate as 1.2 and for degree 4 we might have 2.6 again the degree rate for uh, something might be 0 0.1 d equals to 5 might be 0 0.1 these are random values which i have taken and rather than using the test set we use the validation set to get uh, at which our model as which degree our model is doing the best so we can see now this is really random and it cannot really have something like this kind of error rate when using polynomial regression it will only increase or decrease in a further manner and then again increase in the validation set okay so let's say at d equals to 5 we are getting the best so what we are going to do is we are going to train our model at d equals to 5 and after training our model we will pass our test set that is 20 percent of our data of our test set which our model has never seen and then predict how good our model is doing at the final thing now before that what we need to do for these kind of thing is we need to if we are having 100 percent of our data set we will randomize it this is one of the steps that we should be doing first randomize the complete data set then break it into train valid and test set second thing that we can do over here is uh, training with more data if you are, your model is overfitting then Putting into more data will help your model to uh, just work out with high variance problem. Removing features. Let's say you have a model which 1000 columns. 1000 columns. And you might know that out of 1000, only 100 of them are useful. So you can just cut off the 900 mod, uh, columns or the features and it will give me a better model so you can remove uh, features early stopping is also early stopping the training is also a good example that you can do for to avoid overfitting in a model then you can do regularization we'll talk about regularization much later in the course uh, but basically what it does is when you have thousand columns 
then practically it is not possible to cut off 900 of the features selecting one by one taking from the heat map how this is oh so what we do is we use regularization and from this what uh, eventually it does is it will just uh, cut off the value 900 by itself and just take 100 uh, columns which is useful that is you how you can uh, avoid the overfitting in a model then how to avoid underfitting is by increasing the training time of the model also by increasing the number of features so let's say you have a uh, you have to increase the model complexity okay so let's say um, we have something uh, a data set where we have five features and you see that our model is having high bias so what you can do is you can search for more features increase the features to nine maybe and then you might get a good model or you can use polynomial features it also fixes high bias that are something th this is something which you can play around with so that's it for this video i hope you are well versed with underfitting and overfitting and how you can avoid them in your model